Welcome to this webinar. We are very pleased to welcome you on board and uh, to, to launch officially the opening of the fourth edition of the e-payments challenge. It will take place in November between the 17th and the 19th. And today I'm together with uh, Rertian and we're going to welcome some fintechs and explain to you the concept to tease you and uh, have you on board it. Thank you, Anselin. But before we move uh, into that, um, I just noticed that I forgot my clicker, so I will look to the technical team. Can you just click on the next slide? Before we, uh, before we um, go to these, uh, these fintechs and the experts, we will, uh, we will get you into the e-payment challenge itself. And the e-payment challenge consists out of, the, of, of three main ingredients, as you can see on the slide uh, behind me. Thank you for the clicker. That will work better. Uh, one, of the, one of the ingredients is we, it's Worldline, and, and we have a lot of assets in our portfolio, um, assets, products, solutions that are never end-to-end. -end. Um, they always make part of uh, a certain user experience, a certain user journey. And in order to get that end-to-end -end journey, um, yeah, something needs to be done with it. They need to be integrated. And our customers, we have quite a lot of customers, from very big one to very small one, they have challenges, challenges that rely from what happened the last year uh, in, in COVID, but challenges that, or innovative ideas they would, they would like to explore. And Worldline has part of the solution, but not the full solution yet. Um, and this is where we uh, are uh, relying on the fintech industry because they are the disruptors. They are fast, they are agile, and they can use our major assets to integrate it, to enrich it with their product, to solve the challenges of our customers. It's a co-creation journey, as you can see. We are combining three main ingredients uh, into solving the challenges of our customers. And this is the formula that we used already three years in a row for the e-payment challenge. It's a very successful, uh, successful formula. A lot of fintechs have uh, provided a lot of solutions for our customers in a very innovative way, and our customers are blasted away by their uh, creativeness and uh, Worldline really helps creating these partnerships within the e-payment challenge. That's, that's the basic formula. And if you have questions, we have enabled the chat function in, uh, in uh, this YouTube stream. So feel free to ask your questions if something is not clear and we will answer them at the end of this uh, webinar. Yeah, so um, in this fourth edition, there are a couple of information to, to be kept in mind. Uh, it's uh, again three days. It's a co-innovation journey starting now, but the big event, the big show during which we will all gather fintechs, customers, worldline experts is between the 17th and the 19th of November. Uh, it's the fourth edition, so we'll, uh, let's say, uh, leverage all we, all we uh, learned from the previous ones and also uh, c create new, new things in this uh, new edition, especially the hybrid mode. So we'll, we will be both digital and physical. Some people will be on premises and some people maybe will join from uh, Asia and other countries in the world. Uh, but for those who will join physically, it will be in Paris area. So let's, um, let's um, get some more information about it, Gertian. Yes, yeah, so over the past editions, we on average had most of the time 15 corporations, meaning that we have 15 customers participating and fintechs applying to their challenges. So we have a lot of customers that are interested in such innovative event. We had more than 30 fintechs that were participating in the previous editions and we actively source those fintechs. So we are now collecting the challenges of our customers and based on their challenges, we are looking for the right fintech. For each challenge, we most of the time try to find at least three fintechs, but sometimes this can go up to nine. Mm. Um, so the fintechs are really free to choose to which challenge they subscribe. The company, uh, we, you are not left alone. So we have also 40 Worldline experts on the different products, the different assets, the different solutions. We have also experts from our uh, lab, R&D environment to make sure that they help you, the fintechs, but they also help the customer to think ahead. So we have more than 40, 40 Worldline experts, different fields from product experts to brainstorm experts to help you um, making this solution happen on the e-payment challenge. And not to forget, we have more than 20 plus Worldline assets pre-selected. Um, why we pre-select assets and why not our whole portfolio is available? is available because we want to have these experts on site and it's not possible to get the whole company on site. So we have 20 high quality pre-selected assets, API enabled with a sandbox environment. 
and expertise available on the ePayment Challenge so you have all the tools to start co-innovating with Worldline and with our customers. Let's, uh, let's take a look at the different themes that we see as, as challenge or where challenges could originate from in this year's uh, ePayment Challenge. You see on this slide five different themes. Um, these are the themes that where Worldline with their asset can make the different, uh, difference for our customers. And these are quite um, hot topics um, seen by, by our customers and most of the challenges will be able, we will be able to map to one, of these, uh, to one of these teams. So let's go over them one by one. The first one is related to, uh, to COVID, but it's already a team that was last year part of the e-payment challenge as well. It speed up the cashless society. Um, COVID was an enormous boost for the cashless society and, and, and we, had to, we had to really, uh, our companies had to really uh, migrate in a fast way towards going more cashless than, than before. So a lot of challenges will originate from going cashless and speeding up this, uh, this, cash, this, this cashless way. The second one is adopt digital currency. If you see what Bitcoin is doing today, one tweet can change the, the, the stock market of, uh, of, of Bitcoin quite fast. Um, digital currency is, is more important than ever. Should you include it in your user journey or not? These are questions that you could ask yourself, but Worldline has a lot of expertise and assets that, uh, that, could, uh, that could help you there. And the FinTech, you as a FinTech, you really can make the difference there, including our assets in an end-to-end -end customer experience for one of our customers that would like to explore the adaptation of digital currencies. The third one, it's also a very important one, it's more going to the, 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 our, our financial services uh, um, division within the company. It's drive financial sustainability. Sustainability is, is more important than ever and even end users and customers of our customers uh, put a lot of importance in financial sustainability. So we expect, just like last year, that a lot of challenges will be linked to this team as well. The fourth one, it's again linked a little bit to COVID, is master the omnichannel experience. Um, COVID forced customers, uh, our customers, so uh, merchants, to move towards an omnichannel model from one day to another. You had to be any, at any place at any time and governments were changing their uh, way of working from one day to another. They were adapting the rules based on the situation that was happening and all the rules in all the different countries were not really matched to each other. So as a merchant, you had to be quite agile to adapt yourself to this continuously changing uh, environment. And you had to go really omni-channel. You had to be at any channel at any time from one day to another. So we saw a lot of customers going on a lot of different platforms and they went omni-channel. And their challenge now is to master this omni-channel experience and to create one solid system that is enabling them to, uh, to act better in the future as well. So a lot of challenges will be in this omnichannel experience. And then the last one, also linked to, uh, to, uh, to the COVID um, pandemic, it's provide a touchless or a less touch experience as we are more getting afraid of touching things that are not owned by us in terms of hygienic, uh, hygienic measurements. Uh, providing a, t a, a, a touch less or a less touch experience or a bring your own uh, device experience is something we see popping up uh, as well. And Worldline has a lot of expertise, a lot of assets there that uh, could, uh, could facilitate um, integrating the payment in this kind of uh, experience. So we expect also a lot of challenges originating in this, uh, in this team. These are the five teams. It doesn't mean that you have to fit all the teams to the uh, uh, to all the challenges to these this teams. Um, it are IDs that we gave our customers, but uh, if something is outside of these teams, it's more than welcome on the payment challenge as well. The next thing we have to take a look at is the, uh, the co-innovation journey. Anselin was already describing it. It's a co-innovation journey with us cherry on the cake, the event that will take place from the 17th to the 19th of November. But before that, there is a lot of stats, steps that will hap happen. It's not just that one single event. So what we are doing now, we are together with our customers defining the challenge. And we have already a lot of challenges submitted, but the submission of these challenges is still open. So we are still onboarding customers. We expect to have this done by the end of June. From that moment, actually also from now, because we have already a few challenges, we will start actively looking for fintechs. And if you are a fintech interested to participate, feel free to uh, 
to apply on our platform. The link will be shared with you uh, in, the, in the chat. You can apply on the platform and we will get in contact with you to see if there is any fit with a challenge that we have. So we will actively source those fintechs from the period May to September. In September, all our customers that propose the challenge will present that challenge in a webinar to all the fintechs. So you get more insights in the challenge itself, what is the customer expecting, and you can ask directly questions to the customer to make sure you are fully aligned on the challenge. From that moment, you can apply as a fintech to a certain challenge. Then we start a period of co-working. Um, we have a platform for the e-payment challenge. You will be onboarded on it. The customer is onboarded on it and you can start working together. You can ask questions to the customer, you can organize one-to-one -one meetings, and you can already start working on the solution for the customer. Then we will gather all together from the 17th to the 19th of November in the Paris area, where we have the e-payment challenge event itself. It's an event full of innovation and co-working. So we have an opening conference with a lot of TEDx style talks, with a lot of expertise that is shared. We have the last mile of co-working. You can meet the customer in person. You can really fine tune your solution before on the last day it's presented to the jury. And of course, after staying home for almost one and a half year, it's the ideal event to network again in person and to expand your network and, uh, and meet people again. So it's more than just a hackathon. It's also a networking event, an event to, um, to learn from each other. On the 19th of November, we have then the jury presentation. So each, each uh, fintech will present its solution to the customer. And out of these winners for the challenges, we select one grand winner um, of the e-payment challenge. And afterwards, of course, there is a lot of time to partner with Worldline, with the customer to bring that solution into production. This is a high-level overview of the way towards the payment challenge, what we call the co-innovation journey. Yeah, thank you, Hertjan. And now we, we just wanted to highlight to you why you know you should be part of this event. And uh, well, we see four major reasons, but of course, uh, and uh, that's the point of this webinar, is that you will be able to, to ask your question, but also we'll interview some fintechs that participated and experts so that you get you know a, a real life flavor not only the feedback from uh, Hertian and myself so what what we see really in terms of uh, value added it's the co-creation it's the fact that you are really in a co-creation environment that's really the heart of the event and the heart of the formula it's the fact that for you it will bring if you are a, a fintech but also some customers for them it's a way to be very visible uh, and uh, uh, associate your image with innovation and with the, the major European leader in payment that can open doors for you. Um, it's also a great opportunity for fintechs to be coached and trained uh, thanks to experts and the questions you get and the pitching also you will, be, uh, you will go through. And of course, uh, as Christian said, it's uh, a unique opportunity also to get access to our sandboxes, to all the technical assets that we have and that will be open for you. So now what we propose to you is uh, to, um, to welcome on board uh, Gislain, who participated and won with, um, with Billy, his, um, his um, fintech, already uh, in the first edition together with uh, Accor. Uh, Sylvain also from Cash Sentinel, another startup that worked together with us. And Johan, who is part of Worldline and uh, who is, uh, will also let you know what we have in mind on, on Worldline's side about the, um, the assets on board. So welcome on board, the three of you. And we have some Thank questions you. prepared for, uh, for, uh, for you. Yeah. So let's start with a question for Sylvain. From, uh, from Cash Sentinel. Could you describe the e-payment challenge? What is, what is it for you? What, is, what, what was it for your team? Could you briefly describe it to, uh, to our audience? Yeah, sure. Um, well, uh, I had the, the, the luck to participate in two challenges, uh, one in person in Frankfurt in 2019, and uh, the uh, fully online one last year in 2020. Um, <clears throat> uh, I mean, you know, in a nutshell, it, it really was a, a nice event, whether the, the in-person or, or online one, um, in the sense that 
you get to meet um, uh, obviously a lot of um, um, uh, Worldline uh, people. Some you may know already, but uh, uh, it's a big company now, Worldline. So uh, always uh, quite a few new uh, Worldline uh, people to meet from new teams and new products. And then the, the clients and the other startups. So that experience of um, combining in, in just a, a few uh, short days um, the, the opportunity to discuss with uh, these parties and in uh, in uh, around topics that are basically hot and uh, uh, real because it, they, they, they are stemming from uh, client needs is uh, is great um, for the team obviously uh, I mean the, the in-person event is uh, well it's different and overall I would say better uh, than the 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 online event, but um, uh, just just because it's more lively, there, there are more people to meet, and uh, there's food, uh, there's uh, late night uh, discussions uh, impromptu in the cafeteria, and, and things like that, and that that's unique and, and is hard to replace with uh, an online event. Even though uh, with your studio at Worldline you did uh, pretty good last year, uh, but yeah, we were looking forward to uh, um, being back uh, on site uh, as soon as possible. So, uh, so Gisla, maybe on your side, I mean, uh, you, you cooperated with us and uh, with Worldline mentors and uh, customers. What was your, your cooperation experience? So, um, thank you for, for inviting me. Uh, my, the, we participated to the first episode in uh, 2019. And uh, it was great because, um, so I, I bring my uh, co-founder, uh, during the, the hackathon, and usually a hackathon, uh, you don't really see the, the, the final output. Uh, whereas here, you directly meet with the, your customer, your potential customer that are here with specific needs uh, that uh, we can answer to. And um, for me, it was very, very interesting to do this, uh, this triangle uh, relationship between a board line that brings the expertise from a payment side uh, customer with uh, their needs and uh, how we can uh, solve them and uh, us with our technology. Um, in a nutshell, what we do is we, we help uh, hospitality business to uh, um, make the payment faster and more digital. So uh, we participated to the customer payment experience with Accor and thanks to Worldline, the, uh, the Worldline managed to uh, to um, to align uh, our product with their uh, with the Accor's objectives, and uh, it was a very good cooperation because thanks to that we uh, uh, we 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 um, it ends uh, to a significant uh, deal with Accor. So uh, it was really really uh, impactful. Thank you, and and for you on your side, Sylvain, um, what would you say about the opportunities that it brought to your company? I mean, participating to the e-payment challenge. Yeah, so, I mean, well, we, we were lucky also in the fact that uh, we participated both years and we won uh, one challenge uh, each year, so 2019, 2020. Uh, and, yeah, I mean, the, the greatest uh, outcome for us was that basically the, the clients in both cases are um, uh, you know, want, want to go ahead with the solution. For the first one, it's a bit special because they, um, they, it's Messe Frankfurt and they, you know, it was a topic of welcoming people to uh, live events uh, at, uh, at the Messe Frankfurt and that kind of got put on hold for, for a few uh, few months and perhaps a few years, but uh, we, we understand the topic is still hot. And um, and uh, the second one um, uh, was uh, Digipolis, uh, city of Ghent, uh, basically a town that wants to build a marketplace for their, their merchants in the town. And, uh, and there we can, uh, uh, I mean, we are now in the process with Worldline of um, uh, participating to the RFP, but we, having won the challenge, the, the odds are, are looking pretty good to, uh, to win it together. So, yeah, in a nutshell, uh, I think we would never have heard of this um, topics uh, at, at these customers and had a chance to to meet them and pitch uh, with them uh, a solution built around the uh, worldline uh, assets and and to, to be able to do all that in three days was uh, 
yeah, absolutely uh, uh, unique as uh, an opportunity. Thanks a lot. And, and I think we have one more question, a question for Sylvain. Um, how are you onboarded and how did you hear, hear about uh, the e-payment challenge? Where, where did you get the initial information from? Okay, yeah. So uh, I have to say that we, we were already collaborating with uh, a company that is uh, now part of Worldline, but um, it's called Six Payment Services. It's a Switzerland-based um, uh, payment uh, service provider. And we, we already had started a collaboration with uh, the, the team of uh, Six Payment Services. Um, that collaboration grew uh, at, at the time when they merged uh, with Worldline and and the colleagues uh, from uh, from uh, uh, Worldline now, but Six Payment Services at the time, uh, Eric, if, uh, if you hear us, actually identified the challenge and, uh, and uh, suggested that we participate and helped us uh, tremendously to uh, to get through the, the onboarding and uh, the experience. And so, uh, yeah, it was through one of your colleagues, basically, uh, in, a, in a nutshell. To ask uh, yeah. Gisela, how, yeah. how did you hear about the, uh, the payment challenge and, and how did you get on board it into the adventure? Um, it was thanks. Uh, I, I met um, I met a consultant uh, who was working at Accor, and uh, he said, "Okay, uh, I know that you want to work with Accor, and here uh, Worldline is uh, organizing a specific hackathon. And as I said before, usually we don't do hackathon." Because, uh, but here, because uh, there were, uh, there was accord, and because the the the, the challenge was clearly identified, and uh, because uh, all the mentorship from Worldline was very very easy uh, to play with, uh, we uh, decided to say, okay, let's go. Maybe you know, open the door and uh, just uh, meet new people, and finally. Uh, for a startup, what is uh, difficult at the beginning is to identify the, the good people to speak with, uh, to create the good business. And uh, the strengths of this hackathon was I directly may, uh, uh, met the the right guy at the right place with the right subject. So it was very, very powerful. And uh, um, I was talking with my uh, co-founder uh, yes, uh, yesterday about that, and we were quite sure that it helped us to accelerate very, very fast, and to um, uh, and and to uh, directly be able to start a project just after the hackathon with uh, Accor and uh, create a very strong, uh, long-term relationship with them. So it was very, very powerful. Hey, one one last question. I mean, you. You talked a lot about uh, mentorship and uh, working with Accor and customers, but how was it for you also to co-work or work alongside with other fintechs? W did you have some, you know, do you have some anecdotes or some specific experience on that? Uh, we, we slept at Beson uh, in the office because we had a, we, we wanted to finish our demo. Uh, so we slept two hours uh, during these two days. So it was quite the first time in life that I slept in the office, uh, and uh, we uh, uh, we met other guy from uh, from other fintech that were exactly in the same uh, <laughs> same situation. So it was uh, a bit crazy, but everybody was very focused and at the same time very fair play. Uh, it was great to uh, discover new products um, and maybe uh, new partners. So yeah, it was very very. Very rich, yeah. Good memory. Okay, maybe, maybe we can ask some question to to Johan also as a as a mentor. It would be good to have your view also, Johan. So, um, in your view, what is Worldline mentor role? I mean, throughout the e-payment challenge. But l l let me start with the basics. Huh? We are there to explain you the value of the Worldline solutions and give you support if you want to use them, if you want to integrate with them. Um, we have mentors with more a business profile being able to look at functionalities and how to bring it in the market and the technical experts that help you how to integrate. Um, and of course, it's all about the challenge of the customer. So you really should see us as your bridge. We're your matchmaker. Huh? We help you to bridge with the customer that you're working on on the challenge. But 
But also if you're open-minded, we can bring you other contexts. We see all of the challenges, we see all of the customers, we see all of the fintechs. And if we think something is interesting for you, we typically have the reflex to, to bring you in contact with those people. So second role for me is really to be a kind of a matchmaker and, and, and making sure that you as a fintech also have a, have a maximum value from your participation uh, in, in the event there. And then yeah, maybe a last element to add is see us as your your friendly challenger um, 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 we we really know working with the customers what are they looking for what are the important accents to do um, um, used in used to 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 create new solutions uh, as well so see us as as, as a challenger uh, bringing uh, bringing your assets really up to another level to bring the end-to-end -end value that the customer is looking for. So I think those are three elements that, that I personally really see as an important aspect of a mentor role. And if you should give, you know, one recommendation to, to the fintechs as a mentor, like to, to really uh, take advantage of their participation, what would be your advice? But, but one important element that if you're working on innovations like that, but I should not tell you because no doubt you know that is is show, don't tell, don't explain your solution, but but show it. You you off, probably have a prototype, a demonstrator, a part of of a user experience that you can show. It talks that much more towards the customers. It really inspires, and it's a good starting point to 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 have that sparkle of of yeah let's go that direction let's go let's go that that direction so really really about um, about about showing the value that you have and do that in an in an iterative way uh, don't be shy but ask our opinion our opinion the customer's opinion very early stage it helps you to do quick iterations uh, very short iterations you have some progress and if you can show it you can collect the feedback very very quickly you can tune and and you can also fail fast if there is one certain direction that does not really match it's good to put it to the side and take a, and, and and go on in, in 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 a little other direction and then as a last maybe advice uh, not to talk too much um, um, getting too enthusiastic is be open, be open-minded. You're working, you're choosing the challenges you want to work on, but also be open-minded to the other context that you see. Um, it can really be inspiring and it can bring you the added value you might not expect on an event like this. Thanks a lot. And I think, Johan, you can also maybe already give a small or a brief overview of which assets or in which team the assets will, will be this year in the, uh, in the e-payment challenge. Um, which, which, what things could we expect from Worldwine there? Yeah, yeah. Why, w w without, without going into full details, uh, I think that's something that will come uh, later in the process clearly. Um, but if, if, if I look at the big teams that you introduced before, Gert Jan, um, um, in the, the speed up of the cashless society, we, we really see a link with, with Cloud payment services are really bringing uh, the payment in a new way uh, into the into the world. Uh, the digital currencies, uh, where we a lot is moving both on on private initiatives, but also gradually on 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 on, on public affairs, uh, on, on 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 central bank driven uh, digital currencies. Um, we have assets of wallets where you can integrate that. We have blockchain and stablecoin building blocks that can be used to integrate with your solution behind it. The team of sustainability, um, I think it's, it's as rightfully mentioned, a very important one that is also in the financial industry is gaining that much traction and attention. Um, we have a lot of B2B solutions uh, that are oriented sustainability. Use that to enrich your products, to plug into that and to give an, uh, yet another dimension to that. And then two elements more on the on the user experience, uh, uh, the the omni-channel experience that was introduced. It's clear that that the e-commerce way of doing things is 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 entering the brick and mortar shops. It, it's it's all thanks to COVID in an accelerated way, uh, really being merged together. New ways of of doing of doing uh, of doing a retail experience, a shopping experience. Uh, with with conversational shopping or or bringing uh, other elements, uh, which is are a merge of of online, digital, and physical. This really is an element there where we have uh, a, a lot of assets as well. 
and then linking to the last team uh, about the touchless experience it's about the experience it's about making the payment seamless integrating it in a broader experience and and typically one of the of the the friction the points of friction is your strong customer authentication there so having using building blocks uh, one linking to payment open banking uh, and others linking to authentication new ways of authenticating those are definitely building blocks that uh, could be a great starting point or added value to uh, to your innovative solution thank you Johan. So I think this this gives a really good overview of uh, of what we have in uh, in our pipeline. Of course, we are also selecting the assets based on the challenges we receive. Um, so we have already an exhaustive list, but this list is continuously updated with the challenges we receive from our customers, of course. And it's very important that we have this list because that list will help us to provide the right experts to help you, the fintechs, co-creating with uh, with the customers. Um, Let's go over now maybe to the questions of, uh, of the, uh, the audience. And if you have not asked your question yet, there is a chat functionality within, uh, within YouTube um, or all the other channels where we are live. And you can ask your, uh, your question and we can answer them right away. You can also ask a question directly to Johan as one of our experts or to uh, Gisela and Sylvain from, uh, from the FinTech site. So this one. So we already one of one. one 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 question that we got already in a previous uh, in a previous uh, webinar was describe your e-payment challenge experience. What was it like? Uh, we have a question. We will first answer that one. Um, I cannot see the question right now on the screen. I think so it's I describe your e-payment challenge experience. Uh, what was it like for you and for your team? So, I think it's a question for the fintech side. So, Silva, do you want to answer this question? Sure, with pleasure. Um, I, I guess I will uh, focus more on the in-person event, given that uh, this year's uh, event will also uh, end uh, in person, hopefully. Um, and um, so, yeah, I mean, so, you know, the experience, I mean, uh, um, uh, like my colleague said, uh, it, you know, it was important in the beginning to make sure we, we are not wasting our time because as fintechs, we, we do have a lot of solicitations um, for um, um, hackathons and uh, events and fintech fairs. And I mean, you know, you, you could spend your whole month uh, going from one fair to, to an hackathon and, and not actually do any any work. So it was really important to, to qualify that um, the, there is something in it for us. Uh, and that it's not uh, some sort of beauty contest or, or um, so something uh, purely a world line uh, a showcase. Um, and so that qualification part was really important. And, and I think it's uh, we could feel also it was important for world line to make sure that you, you're bringing to your clients solutions that make sense. So that kind of uh, matching was, I, I guess, I think it happened over a few weeks and, and uh, before the event, and, and that made a lot of sense. Um, after that, the, the event, I mean, uh, it was over, I think, three days, if I remember correctly, as well. And um, yeah, it's really a concentrated deep dive on the, on the, the, the topics you, um, you, you've selected. Um, uh, it, again, what's, what's really nice is how you get to meet the clients, you get to meet the, 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 the world line parties uh, that, that make sense uh, if they bring a technology brick or whatever. And, um, and you can really qualify again that uh, what you're thinking of, what the solution you're bringing can, can solve the, the issue for them. Uh, I remember at some point on the first uh, challenge, we, we picked three challenges. And, and at some point, we thought of dropping some because we, we, we could tell by speaking more with the customer that perhaps uh, it wasn't so clear that our solution was the best suited. We, at the end of the day, we asked them, we were like, hey, you know, uh, are we wasting our time here or, or should we continue? Uh, they, they asked us to continue, we did. Um, but so, you know, the, the, the bottom line is in a very short time, you, you get through uh, a business case that in, outside of the, the e-payment challenge would take probably two, three months at minimum to, to get the same uh, level of information and uh, feasibility and 
and get out with a strong contact with the clients, the worldline teams, and, uh, and potential business uh, um, after the event. So speed and intimacy are among the, the key elements. Uh, would you add something uh, on your side, Gisela, or? I'm fully aligned with uh, what Sylvain said. It's exactly that. Um, the spirit of the, the three days was very um, friendly, but uh, also intense. So it was, uh, we were very well welcomed uh, at Beson. And, uh, and uh, yes, it was, it was a very, very good experience. But I, I'm fully aligned with what Sylvain said. It's exactly that you, 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 you earn so much time and you go directly to the to the point with the right people. Yeah, having having all the experts from the customer side, from worldline side, yeah. together with the fintech, uh, it creates a very unique atmosphere. We have a uh, we have another question uh, coming in from uh, Jean Francois. How many days did you spend on the challenge for the fintech? Yeah. So an average of days because you had some work before, maybe some work afterwards as well to get in, in contact with your customer. On average, how much, how much, uh, how much days um, did you spend? And, and we will ask again the question to both of you. So, uh, Sylvain, I think you it's want to uh, start? Uh, Just, uh, okay, great. Around five, uh, five days, five, five main days. And after that, if you win, uh, of course, it will <laughs> take more main days, but uh, it's for business, so it's worth it. Maybe also uh, an answer from you, yes, Silver? Yeah, um, so uh, the same number came to mind, five days. Uh, I would just say that if you pick one challenge, five days is, is right. If you pick two or three, uh, depending on the size of your teams, then you, you, you may need to throw in a few nights, uh, <laughs> like uh, Gisela mentioned as well. But, um, but yeah, no, long story short, five days from, from uh, uh, already the, the early days before the, the event, then the main event, um, five days sounds absolutely right. So maybe we can zoom in here a little bit on the timeline as well. So in September, you will have this customer webinars. Um, it's approximately one hour uh, for each of the customer challenges. You choose the webinars you want to join. If you want to join them all, and we have 15 customers participating, it's, it's, it's about 15 hours. And then it's up to you, the fintech and the customer, to decide how much time you spend up front. And then you have the three days of events. So indeed, five days, I think it's, it's very reasonable in, 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 in number of time. Looking again to see if you have another question. Yes. Uh, what was your cooperation experience with Worldline mentors and customers like? So I, can, I think we, we can ask both of you again the, the same question. And then maybe Johan can, uh, can comment on it afterwards. Um, I guess I'll start. Um, I mean, to me, uh, again, uh, somehow I don't know why why it happens, but at, at an event like that, when everybody is uh, taken off of their regular office um, and and everybody builds this understanding that we are all here three days to to try and have an outcome, um, it it creates this uh, mentality of uh, openness that was mentioned before. Um, I think on all sides, so us, the startups, we, we probably would show more uh, and try harder than uh, at your average business meeting um, if, uh, if uh, you're not fully convinced of the opportunity. From the worldline side, because, hey, uh, it's the opportunity to push uh, the, the, your, your products and to build partnerships and, and win clients. And from the client side, because, well, they, they took the trouble of uh, creating that challenge and uh, they can see that everyone is working on them. And so they, they will again push harder on their side to, to be open and, uh, and uh, um, come, up, come up with answers, uh, you know, API, uh, test demo APIs or whatever, things that usually would again take, take weeks to, to happen there, uh, take place in a much shorter way. Yes, uh, I agree with that. Because all the skills are in the same place, and and, uh, and the idea is uh, exactly as Sylvain said, uh, finish the three days with a with an outcome. Uh, everybody will bring um, his experience and uh, his point of view. Uh, whereas usually, if you uh, 
go through meetings to uh, sell uh, your solution, it will be more confrontation. So um, what you said uh, in order to begin about co-creation, it's true. It's we, we are we have the same aim and we go uh, uh, usually it's a David versus Goliath uh, game, but here it's David with Goliath. So uh, it, it was very interesting because um, uh, we, 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 we've been very, very deep in the, in the, in the, in the challenge with Accor and Worldline to understand the different uh, challenges from a big group perspective and from a startup perspective. And everybody was aware about the, the, the capacities of each other. So, yeah. It was very, uh, it's not easy at the beginning to, to create a, a triangle relationship, but uh, it, it works very well. And uh, you. Johan, do you want to give a comment here? Yeah, if I add something, I, I, I personally am always very, that much pleased with the, with the energy that, uh, that, 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 that gets released in, in, yeah, in an event like this. Huh? You, you're all there. And as it is something concentrated where you have the right experts from the customer side, as said, that define the challenge, our expert to support you to bridge to the fintechs and you that are trying to build a new solution that, that really answers the, the challenge of the customers, it really creates a, a very positive energy and, and a positive atmosphere of collaboration. In, in the end, you're maybe fishing for the same customer challenge, so your competitors, but but even that you don't really feel on the floor. It's, it's really with a positive vibe that people, yeah, in a focused way, try to build something new for the future. It's really about innovation as it should be, in my opinion. Okay, maybe uh, one or two questions uh, from YouTube. So is this challenge open for people who have experience in e-payment, but not necessarily technical? Uh-huh. <laughs> so how can you be a fintech, a non-technical non fintech? Is it the question or? I think it's a question related to the fact that is a POC or a proof of concept in the end uh, a high requirement to, uh, to participate? Uh, should we implement something? I think the question is more going in that direction. Um, maybe Johan, if you would like to, to give uh, to give your insights on this from the worldline side. But I, I think one of the big values to show is to show really to the customers what you can bring, huh? and 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 that is where we see if it comes also about evaluating the proposals. Yeah, the, the, the one that shows the better user experience with a good technical integration behind it they have a big big added value so you could sometimes you you don't have sufficient time and you you end up somewhere without uh, an end-to-end -end implementation but we definitely see that yeah the the showing value of of really creating something it it adds another dimension so it it, it really brings value it's like you you said uh, show don't tell is really the the message uh, for, yep. for the e-payment challenge it's also a way to convince the customer that your solution is really the one that is working or proven to work. So it, it's a very important aspect uh, to at least try to show something. You can never build the full end-to-end -end experience, but at least we should have the ability to uh, to to uh, to see the proof that the solution uh, is is the right one. Sylvain or Gislain, do you have a a comment on that? Uh, I mean, you you were saying show don't tell, so. Yeah, I mean, uh, from, from, from my side, I would say uh, it's clear to everyone that you will not, I mean, I, I feel like it's not an objective to end the challenge with a working solution that's like ready to be put in production on the Monday, right? So it's not expected to, to bring your, your bunch of coders and, uh, and, uh, and code uh, the whole thing uh, overnight, but uh, it, it's more about at least the way I perceived it, it may not be the same for everyone, I don't know, but it was more about proving uh, capacity and, and compatibility. So um, I guess it would be really hard to go through this event with just PowerPoints and, uh, you know, selling APIs that don't exist yet, because in, in the lead up to the pitch uh, in front of the, the client and the jury, if, you know, if you don't have the actual uh, 
uh, I mean, some, some basic uh, assets that you either had before or, or that you at least kind of prototyped during the event, it, it's going to be hard to, to convince. So, you know, zero technical uh, knowledge, I, yeah, it's, it's a bit of a funny question. I mean, if, if you already have assets, then, then fine. If, uh, if not, um, um, well, yeah, then it's, it's good to bring uh, <laughs> uh, people to help prototype something uh, during the event. As you will be in front of, sorry, as you will be in front of experts, uh, you need to have the same level of expertise because you'll be challenged. And, uh, if you can't answer to uh, to specific questions, both from world line or from uh, the customer uh, side, uh, it will be quite hard. Um, but it depends if the question is, uh, do we need to bring uh, a uh, very technical guy uh, to the uh, the hackathon, or uh, is a sales guy uh, enough? I think the sales guys should have usually uh, a technical uh, knowledge to be sure to uh, interact correctly with uh, with the uh, with the world line and the customer. And it, it's not so that your your whole team should be available on the event as well you mm. can have a representative of your company which is available on the event which interact with the customer um, with uh, with the different uh, world line experts um, and as we are going for a hybrid event the platform which is supporting the e-payment challenge is allowing us to have also a, a call uh, with the full team that is maybe remotely based so you have a representative on site one or two and then the whole team can be uh, can be uh, anywhere else in the world connected online and the major parts of the event will be streamed some publicly and some privately depending on uh, depending on uh, in which phase of the payment challenge we are so we are fully hybrid so your experts can be anywhere in the world but we will follow the Paris CET time zone so uh, that's that's something important to mention as well do we have other questions looking to the technical team here yes we have another question Yeah. So, so, what is the price for the winning fintech? Um, I, I will start with answering, and then Anselin can maybe complement, and we go over to the, the two fintechs uh, stay with us as well. So, the whole challenge is already a price. Um, as, as if you win a, a challenge, you have a direct access to that customer to start doing business. But apart from that, we have for each of the winning fintechs um, some some small technology prizes. And the, the, the winning fintech of the whole event will also go with Worldline, um, explore on a, on, on a, a fair like NRF to present their uh, to present their solution. So there is a lot of marketing uh, value uh, put uh, put into the the winning uh, the winner of the payment challenge. And I don't know if you want to compliment uh, compliment with something, Anselin. Yeah, I guess that the the reasons why. Um it's, it's, it's okay for you or it's value added to join. It's what you said about marketing power. I mean, Worldline is, again, uh, is the leader in payments in, in Europe. So going together with Worldline in fairs, but also uh, getting some joint communication, PR, interviews, uh, social media buzz, and so on. I mean, all the Marcom, you know, like setup of Worldline, benefiting from that can really boost your image and your visibility. And um, of course, if you win in terms of partnership, it will be uh, really a, a level, uh, go a level uh, higher because um, uh, you bring uh, your agility, as we said, in the winning formula, but also we bring the scalability. So it means that maybe if you are a very local uh, startup, you can maybe uh, open, you know, the borders and go abroad. Or, um, or go to another industry and meet other customers. So we are really here also to, to open doors uh, together. And uh, well, the story is to be co-created, So, but there are some, as you said, a, a mix of tangible prizes. Uh, you, you will get some nice goodies and so on. But also, uh, we really insist on the partnership because for us, it's not an event, you know, just to make some buzz. Our idea is really to, to co-create and to have it last uh, throughout time. And uh, as uh, Silva, for example, said, they came twice, Cash Sentinel, uh, and each time they got some value out of it. So the idea is really to build something uh, over time with you. 
I think this was uh, the last question. Um, I, would, I would like to thank all the speakers uh, from Worldline, Johan, and from, uh, from the FinTech side, uh, Gislain, Sylvain. Thank you very much for being with us. For all the participants online, the application for FinTechs for Dpayment Challenge is open now. Um, on our LinkedIn post, you will be able to find a link to the platform where you can pre-register yourself so we can get in contact with you and go over all the challenges and see if there is a, a perfect match. If you have any questions, please uh, feel free to reach out to anyone of Worldline and we will try to get back as soon as possible with all the information on the, uh, on the e-payment challenge. So we really thank you for being with us today and hope to see you uh, on the e-payment challenge. Thanks a lot. Thank you very much. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.